give us time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Were you surprised, I guess, to see the conservatives uh, vote in favor of this? Well, it's it's second reading, so it's not, you know, you, we remain vigilant. There's lots that can happen between now and then. But I'm, you know, I take this as a really good sign. Still, do you view this as a policy shift from the conservatives when it comes to, like, what we've seen in the Harper era and anti-union bills? Do you believe that conservatives are having a policy shift when it comes to uh, unions and workers' rights. If you're asking me to diagnose the conservative psyche, probably best I stick to my knitting. I don't. I don't know. Um, I, look, ultimately, you know, you heard from the NDP. This is something that we agreed to. It's something that we then agreed to with them, and it is something that we are following through now. And this is, you know, we are midway through a monumental change to labor relations in this country and to workers' rights in this country. It, this is. As someone told me who knows a lot about the history of the labor movement in this country, workers have been asking for a ban on replacement workers longer than Canada has existed. I mean, this is huge. It is a monumental change. And I, just to give you an idea of it, for instance, our conciliators and mediators in, in my department, are, they have a 96, 97 percent success rate. If you, they come in the room, they're immediately respected because they understand the intricacies of negotiation, where people are. I mean, it is very complex, you know? It's like three games of chess going at once. Now we've had two, three, four more boards. It just changes the rules and the dimensions here because you no longer have the valve of replacement workers. Now this table is level. It is fair. And, and that changes things. So that means that it is going to take a bit of time uh, for this to come into force. What they've said to us is they need 18 months. Uh, and that, by them, I mean our conciliators and mediators. First, because we're going to have to provide more, more resources to the Canada Industrial Relations Board, which is key to making sure that this all works. Then they've got to, be, they've got to hire new people and they've got to train up. Even the ones who are quite seasoned looked at this and went, you know, Minister, when you've been saying this is the biggest thing to happen to labor relations in Canadian history, uh, you're right. So it takes us, it's going to take some time to get, to, to get this going and, and, and to be able to do it well, because we don't want any hiccups at the table. At the end of the day, we here are convinced that this will lead to greater stability and security for our supply chains, as well as a huge, huge improvement for workers' rights in this country. So is that fair to say that the NDP demand, or I guess the NDP and Bloc demand, to, to cut the implementation period is off the table, just not possible right now? Oh, we keep talking to them. Um, the most important people to talk to here are our mediators and conciliators because their success rate is so high and because they know the table so well. I can talk about the table and the success of the table. I can talk about how we are making this fundamental change, but how it works, the to and the fro that make our economy work in so many important areas that happen to be in federal jurisdiction, whether it's, it's banking or rail, transportation, you know, uh, seaways. All of these things depend on stability and everybody knowing the rules. So it's going to take some time. What about expanding it to the public service? The NDP says that's what they want. Well, the public service, no. Replacement workers don't affect the public service. So is that what you say to Mr. Singh about? Yeah, no, that's, there's, there's, no, there's no replacement workers for the public service. I don't, he, he should be aware of that. Can I just ask about the Conservatives? Obviously, they voted at second reading for the bill. Um, do you now see maybe your biggest opposition being business? We just heard from the Canadian Chamber of Commerce saying that uh, your own discussion paper said that it would exacerbate strikes, and they're obviously against this legislation. So now that the political hurdle in the House has been cleared, do you now think the next hurdle is going to be businesses? Well, I think it was taken a bit out of context. Uh, first of all, we looked at two jurisdictions where um, this currently exists, a ban on replacement workers, and that's in BC and in Quebec. You know, provincial jurisdictions and federal jurisdictions are a bit different, uh, but the bottom line is, like, there hasn't been, the, the earth hasn't opened up, you know? I mean, there, there is not much of a difference between those two provinces and other provinces. And we think in, in, in federal areas of jurisdiction, it will add stability and security, because we believe it will keep people at the table rather than drawing them away. Because sometimes even the threat of replacement workers, the anger that that invokes, the frustration that that invokes, uh, distracts from what's at stake, what's at the table right in front of you, because that is where the deals are made. So we want 100% of people's attention focused on that table, knowing they got nowhere else to go. They've got to figure it out here. 
So, you know, I mean, for, for business, look, it, it, it is a change. And, you know, for, for people who, uh, for some people, they just don't like change. I would argue this is a change that's a long time coming. The notion that we can disrespect people's work and just bring in somebody else to do your job is right out of Charles Dickens. It's old. It does not keep up with a modern economy. Other economies have changed this. Workers deserve better. And any you know, labor leader you know, whom I've talked to, Lana Payne, B. Brusque, any of them, will tell you there is nothing that they have found more earth shattering for their membership. Uh, no wonder they get so angry than watching somebody else just come in and do your job while you're out there suffering on a picket line day in and day out. That is, that is not, there's no dignity in that. There's no respect in that. And these days, workers, they deserve dignity. They deserve respect for the work that they do. We know better now, so let's just improve. And, and do you think the, the conservatives are now on side with this bill? Do you have that sense, either through background discussions that you've had? I mean, you said today at Cabinet that you, the party has surprised you before. After Cabinet. I can't say what I said. Y so after Cabinet, yes. <laughs> so, like, are you... Yeah. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I mean, look, this is a legislative process. So I go into it eyes wide open. I'm not, uh, you know, any doe-eyed optimism that I may have had is long gone now. We'll see how the process works. I'm hopeful. I think, I think what I saw today was, uh, you know, conservatives that are willing to consider it. Um, so let it go to committee and let's take it from there. It's not over till it's over. But I think this is a very hopeful sign. And for, you know, if I was a uh, a union member, a worker in a federal jurisdiction in this country, I would take this as a real hopeful sign, a sign of solidarity and respect. Have they taken away your wedge? My what? Your wedge. Because this has been seen as possibly a wedge issue for you and the NDP, calling the conservative bluff on whether or not they're now the workers' party. Oh, so has they, have they taken away your political wedge? <laughs> I think that there's plenty of wedges or differences between our two parties. I don't think that we're lacking for them. Um, I was told to do a job here, and that is to get this legislation developed and to get it passed. It is much easier to get it passed when all parties agree, for sure. And I think, to be honest, I think it's a really good, it is a, if, you know, as I said, if I'm a worker in this country, this is a good sign. It means that there, there's an acknowledgement of respect for the work that they do. So you then you don't share the same concerns that the NDP have, that the Conservatives are going to maybe try to put poison pills into this bill during the committee stage, or that they're going to, I guess, stall legislation from actually passing with filibuster tactics or other procedural tactics? Well, I got, you know, I've said many times, I am always vigilant. I am always vigilant. Um, and so vigilance remains. Let's see what happens. There remains a worry then. Oh, it's not over till it's over. Like, I'm not, we're not, the confetti's not out here yet. Um, you know, we just had a chat inside, and I went, you know, we're confident, but, you know, the, the, we're not there yet. It's going into second reading, and we got unanimous consent. That is a good thing. I will take it. But the rest of it, we got a law to make, and that ain't easy. You chatted with your conservative counterparts? Just... No. Oh, you, among your... your this colleagues. gang. This gang, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Who is this gang? Like, liberal MPs, but... Like, Indeed so, yeah. Okay, and but you're just, Labor Caucus? I don't know. Yeah, and well, to be honest with you, they're, they're, we have a Labor Caucus, and some of them are members of our Labor Caucus. We just started a Labor Caucus. Frankly, um, unions and workers are making their voices heard. These are MPs that we're hearing from, and, and from all sides, but these are MPs that we're hearing from MPs and, and are hearing from workers and hearing from their representatives who are demanding more in the tightest labor market that Canada's ever seen. Go figure. So, you know, it's smart politics, too. It is smart politics, finally, right? Right to be on the worker's side here. So I welcome this. It's a good sign. Thanks.